Hello everyone. If you are into natural language processing, you are in for a treat today because we are diving into one of the most common tasks in NLP that is the text classification. So, what exactly is this text classification? It is the process of teaching a model to assign a class or label to a piece of text. And let me tell you all this has tons of applications from sentiment analysis to spam text classification and even language detection. In this particular video we will explore all the techniques which are used to solve text classification problem using large language models. And by the end of this video you will have a solid understanding of everything. All right, let's get started. There are two major ways to use LLMs for text classification. The first way is by using representation models or encoder only models. So this diagram represents overview of how representation models are used for text classification. So input is text document and output is class label. Here class label might be zeros or one where zero might represent a negative sentiment, one might represent positive sentiment. There can be more than two class labels as well. The second way is by using generative models. Now this generative model given an input text generates output text. So suppose the example sentence might be best and reliable product. The output will not be a class label. The output will be like this is a positive review or this is a negative review about that particular product. Now let's see in depth the representation model and generative model. Let's start with representation models. This kind of models are also known as encoder only models. So what does this exactly mean? Well, these kind of models focus on understanding the input text without generating any new content. They are like great readers. They focus on reading and understanding the text to classify it properly. Now there are again two main types of representation models which are used for text classification. The first type is task specific models. Now these are pre-trained models like BERT which are fine tuned for a specific task. For example, if you are working on spam detection, we fine tune the BERT specifically to recognize spam and not spam messages. The second type is by using embedding models. Now these models generate general purpose embeddings. These embeddings are like summaries of the text, which can be used for a variety of tasks like sentiment analysis or topic classification. Now both these methods use the power of representation, that is the model's ability to capture the meaning of the text and classify it based on what the model has learned. Here is the in-depth diagram showing how we can use representation model for text classification. Let me simplify it for you. We have input text document. Now we need to select a pre-trained encoder model like BERT or Roberta. You can go to Hugging Face website and you can select any pre-trained encoder model. Now this model out of the box is not trained to classify any text. We need to fine tune this model for text classification and that's why we will name it as task specific model. Once this task specific model is trained, this particular model can be directly used on the input text document to output the class label. So this is the first approach. Now let's look at the second approach by using embedding model. So again, we select the pre-trained encoder model. We fine tune this particular model like BERT or Roberta to generate embedding of the input sentence. And then this embedding is used as features and we can use any traditional model or traditional classification ML model to output class label. If you have any doubts in any of the part, do ask in the comment section. Now that we have covered the representative models for text classification, let's go to generative model for text classification. Now this is the overview fashion using which we can use this generative model uh, or decoder only model and encoder decoder model uh, for text classification. Now we have input text. The objective of the generative model is to generate text. Now what happens is this generative model, it doesn't know what to do with this input text document like best and reliable product. We have to guide this particular model. So guiding is done by something called as a prompting. We can give instruction to this particular model like classify this particular text into positive or negative. And after giving this instruction or prompt, this generative model generates sequence of tokens. So here the input is also sequence of token, output is also sequence of tokens. The main challenge is how we write the instruction or prompt. 
so as we saw in the previous slide generative models work a bit differently for text classification instead of just classifying the text into labels these models generate the labels themselves here's how it works these models are usually trained on a wide variety of tasks they are like jack of all trades but don't always perform well when we give them just a random text without any context why because generative models need guidance to get the correct output here's where prompt engineering come into play imagine feeding the model a spam message without any context if we don't give the model any context it might have no clue what to do with this particular text but if we guide the model by giving right context and instructions or prompt like is this message spam or not we get much better results iteratively improving the prompt or instruction to get preferred or expected output is called prompt engineering so let's recap everything what we learned today first is the representative models these are great for classification tasks because they focus on understanding the text and can be fine tuned for specific tasks or general embeddings then we saw generative models uh, these models are more flexible but they require guidance in the form of prompt engineering to generate accurate labels or sequences in the next videos we will dive deeper into how to use both these models for text classification plus i will tell you or i will walk you through step by step implementations right from scratch so stay tuned that's it for today guys thanks a lot for watching and don't forget to like subscribe and hit the bell icon if you don't want to miss any future videos We are just getting started with text classification and I can't wait to show you how to implement this models yourself so see you in the next video guys thank you